we're looking at the text tool in layout at the moment. We're lucky the shortcut for this is T, the same as it is in SketchUp, so easy to remember. All you need to do is either hit T for text or select the icon up the top and then come down to your drawing space, left click and from here you can start typing. As I type the cursor moves along the trick for the text tool is knowing what to do when you finish. So your instinct may be to hit the spacebar key because spacebar allows you to go to the selection tool, usually in layout and sketch up. But however, if I hit the spacebar key in here, it'll just add an extra space in, which is handy for typing. So what you'll need to do is either hit the escape key or come up and activate one of the other tools using your cursor rather than your keyboard. If you come over to the trays, you'll find that there's a text style palette that you can maximize. And fr from within here, we can change the font, the typeface within that font, the size, and also where and how things are laid out up the top here. Like with most tools, we're able to either retrofit an object by selecting it and then changing something about it. But we can also set standards that can be used from that point on. Now the difference is this, if I select an object and change it, it will change immediately and only that one object that I've got selected. However, if I de deselect my object by clicking out in the white space or also alternatively hitting the escape key, it allows me to set standards that will happen from that point on. So I'm going to hit the text tool, I've got nothing selected and now if I make changes and size changes, it's going to affect how large my text is when I put in, in next. It'll also mean that I could undertake some other operation, go back to the text tool, start again, and it will still remember the settings that I used when I had nothing selected and updated the type, style, and size. This also works for other tools like dimensioning and callouts. So give it a try, it's well worth your time. After we've put text in, we can also select it and then adapt the exterior box or shrink it. We can also right click and set make unbounded. What unbounded means is that as I increase the text and enter for new lines, it will make the bounding the same size as the text that I've entered. If I again right click and go make bounded, means that I can use this exterior boundary to amend the size and position that the text takes up. You'll find situations where both are helpful. Along the top line here within our textile tray, we have things that you're probably fairly familiar with like underline, strike through, and text color. So if I hit text color, it'll bring up my colors palette, and this will look slightly different if you're on a Mac. And I'm able to move around within here to different colors, and you notice that it stayed black, and the reason for this is because of the darkness slider up on this side so I can pull this back down into the red end and around and this is how I would set about changing my color. 
You might be familiar with alignment from word processing. So I'm going to stretch this box out a little bit more so that it makes sense. And I'm going to hit left, which is currently on. It's aligned over on the left. If I hit center, it will align in the center of this bounding box and right will take it to the right. I'm going to stretch this down now to show the next things that we can do. So we can anchor at the top middle or bottom and here's another way that we can set whether it's bounded or unbounded here instead of right clicking 